welcome to the MVP show. Today I'm having a chat with Beth Beryl. She's one of the newer business application MVPs. She lives in Florida, Tampa specifically, and is a massive asset to that local community and the wider business applications community. For full show notes for this episode, visit nz365guide.com forward slash 161. Now, let's get on with the show. Hey, Beth, welcome to the MVP show. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Great. Good to have you on the show. Um, we've done a podcast in the past um, uh, about a totally different topic, of course, much more around your career and, and lessons learned from being inside big organizations. This one is really about understanding who Beth is and the journey that you've been on over the last you know, years in your career and ultimately recently becoming an MVP. Awesome. Uh, yeah, sounds, sounds exciting. Looking cool, forward to it. Cool, cool. So before we get underway, Beth, what part of the world do you hail from? I live in Tampa, Florida, USA. And uh, it is, I know everybody else is under snow, but we are about 80 degrees right now. And it was a beautiful day. Uh, worked in shorts in my back patio. <laughs> are, are you expecting snow? Never. We had, I think they had it once in the seventies. Oh, wow. Okay. So it is rare. But yeah, but it didn't really stick on the ground, right? Here is, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. we get 10 months of heat and humidity. Yeah. Cause it, I mean, heck, I was just in Orlando, which is what, only an hour away from Tampa. Is that right? Yeah, it was definitely correct. hot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. You have monsoon rains though, don't you? Do you have some crazy r- rain patterns sometimes? Well, Tampa is the lightning capital of the world. I don't know if people know that. And so in the summer in Florida, you can cu- kind of time your watch on when it's going to rain. We'll get um, like four o'clock, five o'clock in the afternoon. You get these terrible lightning storms and, you know, everybody, um, usually when you're driving home from work, but you really have to make sure you have surge protection at your home. You know, I, you, everybody in Florida knows somebody whose house has been hit by lightning and you know how it goes with lightning. You might lose a, a printer, but your computer's fine. Or you might lose a hard drive, but the rest of your computer's fine. Wow. So, so is it quite common for things to get hit by lightning there? Yes, very, very much so. Man, I didn't realize that. And what about um, people? Do they ever get hit? Well, most people who are not being smart, um, people go under a tree to get out from under the rain. And that is the worst place to be. Yeah. And then it's you have like... the kids, you know, I, I call them kids, but people who are on the beach that, oh, it's just a little rain and lightning, um, you know, if you hear like for every five seconds you count is a mile away, but just cause you, you can get hit by lightning though, without really seeing it because it is such a widespread thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I was leaving Orlando from summit, um, they said, uh, sorry, no one's allowed on the air bridge because there's lightning in the area. And I was like, not the, yeah, the air bridge to get on the aircraft. And I'm like, wow, I didn't. So yeah, they just stopped anybody. You know, it was a fully covered air bridge, but obviously there's a risk that if it hits it, people get hurt. Yes. They, that's you, you try. A trick is if you come into Florida in the summer, you try not to have an afternoon flight. Wow. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. I was flying but, out in the afternoon. <laughs> but it, it's one of those things though, you know, you blink an eye and the, the shower's gone and it's beautiful again. It, it really is. Um, it could be raining in your front yard and not your backyard. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you've recently become a, an MVP. What category did you get awarded in? And, uh, and, and what's it like being an MVP? Is there any change? Uh, uh, I got in business applications, pretty much Dynamics 365 and Power Platform. Um, I am still in awe, you know, and um, excited. The biggest change is the, um, I'm a little overwhelmed by the amount of information that's out there and the amount of, um, it, it, the MVP seem like a small family, you know, there's always one or two outliers, but, but everyone seems to really communicate well. And whether you're in, you know, you're in New Zealand, I'm in Tampa, you know, Prague, everywhere. It seems like it's a great community. Um, my biggest thing is just ch- channeling all the information because I'm one of those people that I want to know everything, but I, there's no way you can keep up with every, you know, with everything. <laughs> I'm sure there's a flow for that. <laughs> yes. You mean, you know, power, power automate, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, exactly. Right. To try and manage uh, because you are drinking from a fire hose, right. Once, once you get inside the program and, and that seems to be a common comment. A lot of people make is there's just so much information um, coming from so many different channels, areas, that type of thing. Yes. And, and like I said, I'm always one of those that 
with technology. I always want to know what the next shiny toy is, right? And yeah, yeah. So tell me, how are you handling it then? How how are you handling that constant amount of noise um, and really working out what to focus on and what not to? Well, one, I have my day job, so it kind of forces me to not, you know, I can play all day long with that, that stuff. But I am trying to, you know, most customers are not up with Microsoft in the news, latest and greatest. So I'm trying to take a step back and tell myself, okay, I don't need to be the first one to know this. I don't, you know, it, it's more of a self-talk. And I like there's certain things I like, and I'm not a, there's certain things I don't like. So I'm trying to concentrate on, on my likes, you know, my, what really hits me well um, and what might affect my customers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you look at the landscape 12 months out, 12 months out and, you know, you where do you think you're going to start learning new stuff? As in, you know, for me, it's just been a power app, uh, power apps virtual agent. You know, of 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 started exploring that, and it's that's uh, you know the technology is not new; it's been rebranded. But man, it's some exciting stuff, and where they're going with it. What, what's what? What are you looking at? Well, I'm actually looking at the Omni Channel right now myself. Um, but it comes from customer need. You know, that's we have a customer who's going to need that shortly. And they have very strict security needs. So I'm um, actually diving into the different, because as you know, it's, there's several pieces to that. And it's nothing we're not familiar with. Like anybody who's worked with a major, whether it's your cell phone or or one of your, they all have those kind of omni-channel features. But now I'm looking at it from the back end. So it's kind of fun. So is this does this plug into the customer integration framework as well? It, it plugs into the customer service, you know, Diamond 35's customer service. Sorry, no, isn't there like CIF, C-I-F, is it the, the, uh, is it the customer integration framework? I'm not sure. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, but I'm not sure exactly. I just know it's an add-in um, for customer service that actually, you know. Um, channel integration framework, channel integration, not customer. That's what it is. Yes, that's what it is. It, yeah, okay, yeah. Thank I was you. like, yes. I'm glad I... Uh, uh, run that through Google because a new customer didn't seem to resonate for me. When you said channel now, I, yes. Okay. That's what I guess it was. There's so many customer insights, customer service insights. So I, I figured there's something else I didn't know about. Um, no, 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 no. You're onto it. So Dynamics 365 channel integration framework version two came out in October. Yeah. And they, re, you know, they're kind of rebranding some of the, the stuff in there and adding some new features. Um, and it's very cool because, uh, you know, when I work with some, when, when I'm as a customer myself, when people have those bots and whatnot, you know, I find some of them very frustrating. Um, but now I see from the back end how you have to tune it to make sure you get, you know, the simplest customer to the, you know, the complex customer. So um, I have a better appreciation for it than I used to. <laughs> So, so that's cool. So you're really understanding how to configure these, are you? And and um, as in train them, as you say? I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Because I have a little different opinion of artificial intelligence. Because, um, yes, it's artificial intelligence, but more you're tweaking it for what information you want, right? I mean, it's not it's not learning per se as far as you know oh it's going to do the right thing or it's going to do the the next logical thing it's what you train it to do right it's following a pattern yeah yeah interesting so anything else that's got your attention at the moment um i you know i um, am am just like i said i'm drinking from a fire hose so you know i've started doing some flow or power automate i am one thing that i my big joke is and of course, I'm a big advocate of the product and I love the way where it's going. But my big joke in my company now is, you know, they say uh, no code, low code. And I say, but what about no logic? Because there's a lot of people who don't have logic and are creating these these flows and they're horrible. It's kind of like the old day with, you know, with workflow. If you don't have a an else statement, right, you're going to kind of be left in limbo. And I've seen a couple of consultants do some of these flows that you're like, oh, my God, <laughs> please don't tell me you put that in public, you know production i said no but it's fun it's a lot of fun to do it that way so tell me about um your path to becoming an mvp i know you did a lot of stuff was it d365 saturdays and things like that yeah well the funny part is is, is i have been talking at summit for six or seven years now um i started when i was in the cloud 
So I was originally doing most of the stuff on my own because I have a passion for technology. And I, you know, somebody kind of talked me into doing one session and I found that I had a, I loved it. So a lot of the stuff I was doing was more my passion for the product. And, uh, and then someone said, oh, you know, you should become an MVP. I'm like, well, well what do you, you, you know, what do you, what's involved? Because I thought it'd be a little bit different. Um, and I was already doing the Dynamics 365 Saturday last year um, when it was recommended to me. And, uh, you know, I, once I heard about it and what it, it is, I mean, I know Chris Cognetta for a long time and some of the MVPs, but I really didn't know what they did to get there because it's, it's kind of, it's not a trade secret, but you, you think it's different than what it is. And, um, but so then, you know, I already was already doing Dynamics 365 Saturday and some of the other stuff that I did uh, was, you know, already on the way to being an MVP. I just, you know, started adding a little bit of Twitter or a lot more Twitter and a little, you know, I blog all over the place instead of my own site. So I started blogging on my own site um, and, you know, that kind of stuff. So it, it's kind of the journey was by accident to begin with. But then I targeted it more when I knew, you know, what my end goal was. Yeah, 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 yeah. So just just to unpack for me, what's involved in, like, because you, you said you didn't realize what's involved, in, and there's a quite a bit involved in getting to that point of being an MVP. And then it's not like it's a lifetime achievement, right? There's ongoing, you know, it's it's maintaining that. What was involved in putting on, because um, I understand you pretty much, um, was central to those three six five events in your region going. What what was involved? You know, it, you want to be, you have to be passionate. I, I don't believe that if you just uh, Dynamics three sixty five uh, CRM that you can even get there. Everybody I've met, that's one thing that's amazing to me. Everybody I've met who's become an MVP or even you know uh, wants to become an MVP are very passionate about the product. Right? They they love to talk about. Right, wrong, and different. They love to talk about the product, and um, and then it's just getting involved. It's it's hey, I'm going to talk about what I know, but it doesn't mean I'm the smartest person in the room. I think that's what people make the mistake of thinking that hey, the MVP knows it all, and as you know, with Dynamics H5, you can't know it all. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe CRM 4.0, but not you know not the, the progression. It's it's different now, right? Yes. And so it was just, you know, I'd go out and say, hey, this is what I know. Um, and asking other people, hey, what do you know? And asking people to share it because everybody loves to share. Everybody loves to um, say, hey, this is the way I did it. And and that's the other thing that was amazing to me about Dynamic 35. You know, there's not one way to do it, right? There's no right one way. And, and so it was I love to learn the different ways people do it. So I started getting involved because when you go to these events, right, CRMUG or you learn so much and, you know, Mark might do it one way. Chris might do it another way. You know, uh, Jim does it another way. And, but they're all the right answer. Um, and it's kind of like getting in the conversation with managed and unmanaged solutions, right? <clears throat> you can, they can talk for three days about it and argue with it. And some people are very passionate about what they want, but, in the end, either will work depending on, you know. Yeah, it depends, right? It's a, it's a favorite favorite saying, I think, in IT, right? It depends. But then when the, and the thing is, what I, I joke around, and someone told me this a long time ago, people who don't succeed at this don't try. Because I'm like, you know, when I did like the Dynamics 35 Saturday, I'm like, oh, who am I to do this? I what am, Why me? You know, all I did was ask a question, how do I get Dynamics 35 Saturday to Tampa? And somebody said, oh, well, you just need to find a place to present it, get speakers and get sponsors. Well, I, as you know, that's a little easier said than done. Um, but I went to Microsoft and I knew a couple of the Microsoft people. And I said, hey, you know, do you want to help me do this? Um, because uh, some of them used, I used to work with. And um, and they were very excited about it. And, and like I said, the rest is to keep asking, hey, who wants to speak? I'm a little lucky in Tampa because we have five MVPs within a few miles. Of wow. Tampa. Hang on. Who are the five? But Steve Mordew, uh, which you know well, Chris Cognetta, uh, The Hobbit, um, Sean Tabor, um, um, Scott LaFonte. 
Oh, I didn't realize Lafonte was in the same area. Yeah, he's like five minutes down the road. Gotcha, then, gotcha, gotcha. And then myself, right? So Yeah, yeah. So five. Fantastic. And the funny part is we all live in the same part, of, except for Steve Mordew. We all live really within the same, the same side of town. It's kind of funny. Your own neighbors. In fact, we're meeting on Friday to talk about a hackathon for the next 365 Power Up. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So so are you planning another event then like this in the coming, what, six months? Yeah, next um, February. It's actually February 22nd. Wow. It's not far away. Well, last year I did it in six weeks. I mean, last year it was kind of like, okay, January 1st. Mm-hmm. I asked about it and the next thing you know, it just snowballed. Um, and I did it, you know, I did it in six weeks and I had a help from Jim Novak on the sponsoring side and nice. He's good. Websites. Mm. Um, but it came together so nicely. Cause while I was doing it, Ben Vollmer was like, Hey, can I come to your event and speak? And so that really, you know, was it icing on the cake for me, but w- we had a sold out show pretty much. We had Tampa, a small office and we had over 150 people register. Wow. That's awesome. And I had to cap it out at 150 because technically we cannot fit 150 people in the the big room. Um, at Microsoft. Yes, at Microsoft. So, and and it was just really, it, like I said, it just, I, everyone says, oh, you did a lot of work, you did a lot of work, but I just felt like, you know, all the pieces fell in the right place. Yeah, 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 yeah. So tell me, if you were giving advice to other people putting on a 365 Saturday event or a D365 Saturday event or anything, you know, Power Platform Saturday event, what what's kind of... What ducks do they need to get in a row uh, to put and make an event like this work well? Well, like I said, I think the three things I said, you need to, first, you need to find a venue. And Microsoft's, if they can, more than happy to to um, host it here anyway in Tampa. Mm-hmm. But you have to have someone who's going to sponsor you for Microsoft because you can't be there without a Microsoft person. Right. So you actually need somebody, a physical, a Microsoft employee to kind of open the building and represent your voucher for you for the day right on site. Correct. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What else? And then um, you start asking for speakers. You know, the MVPs all, if they they can get there, are very happy to come and speak. So you, you first hit the people around you. Um, and then you start putting out on social media. Hey, I need speakers. Hey, you need speakers. Um, and if you have speakers, if you have the right speakers, the sponsors come. You know, I had sponsors asking me if they can come to Tampa. A lot of it was last minute, but I was doing everything last minute as well. But, you know, like Click Dimensions, they're probably going to sponsor us again this year. But that, you know, it's a nice investment for them with with a, a decent, you know, amount of attention. We had, um, last year we had Salgari come all the way from um, yeah, Ireland. And and um, they came and spoke and their session was packed. And they thought it was, you know, they thought it was well worth the money. Yeah, well, they're big into the whole channel integration framework, right, as well, that omni-channel what you started out with. And so, again, it just, um, so if you get some good speakers, you know, all you need is one or two, and, you know, it kind of um, comes together. And then you have to decide what topics once, you know, you get you get everything for speakers, and it, I think you probably know this, you get anywhere from, you know, hey, workflows to Power Platform to, um, you know, Power BI. So uh, you have to choose. Uh, towards the end, I was getting too many sessions because, like I said, it's a small office. In wow. Tampa. Okay. So, so you had you were inundated with with content. Yes, I was. In, yes, and um, it was you know it's a good problem to have, and I also wanted to give everybody their sessions. Uh, so we actually ended up using a small room as you know also, uh, but you have to really choose because you don't want someone coming in there and telling you how to use the old interface, and. And I mean, it's not a horrible thing, but people want the new, right? The new shiny toys. Um, but the other thing that people f- tend to forget is, you know, use other channels. I have somebody from the Microsoft team MVP who last year, she asked me at the last minute, can I come and speak? And and she said, okay, this is how teams work with Dynamics 365. And her session was packed. Such a, such a brilliant, you know, every time I've seen teams and Dynamics done together, um or power apps and stuff you it is popular right it's a it's a very popular topic so yeah so people so if, you know you can also you don't have to just have dynamics mvps or, is my point you know it's use you know whether it's a sharepoint sharepoint saturday is still very big around you know town so you can always hit them up there's there's so many people that will want to come and speak and then the sponsors come and then it's just getting people to help organize it you know it's just that's the hardest part <laughs> you know having people give their time 
because everybody wants to come and speak and then, you know, and, and then they want to sit in other people's sessions. They don't want to, you know, help outside. And that, that was one of my biggest uh, underestimate, you know, underestimations was I thought I'd be able to sit in some sessions last year. <laughs> and um, I was too busy answering questions and talking to people. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Did you have any like a uh, uh, Microsoft keynote address or anything like that? We had Ben Volmer. Nice, excellent, great speaker, good guy. Yeah, yeah, a lot of fun, a lot, of, very funny. And when he asked if he can come and do a uh, you know field services, that was you know a year ago when it wasn't as popular as it is today. Um, you know, how could I turn him down? Because he is such a popular speaker. Um, and he, and honestly, I didn't know him that well. I knew the name obviously, but last year and really as impressive as as you see him you know he's he tells you how it is and that's the way i like to talk to people you know yeah keeps it real keeps it real so so you know you've talked about the fire hose of of content coming in what's your what's your sense of of community has it grown do you feel uh, gr you know uh, i'm more connected to the community or is it just the same or, or, or what are your thoughts um i think I'm more connected to the MVP community, but I think also it's maybe a little less with the average users. And where I'm a little different than I think a lot of MVPs is I love to, to work with the end user. Summit, you know, the the D365 Summit that we just went to in Orlando is actually my <clears throat> favorite conference because I get to see what the real world, world is doing. And some of those people will tell you how they're doing it and something you know, I would never think of. And not that the MVPs don't do that as well, but we tend to start looking at the new stuff and stay along the new paths. And like I said, the MVP community has really been great. I'm still intimidated by a lot of people. Um, but once, you know, once you talk to everybody, you know, you realize they all started somewhere. And, you know, like I said, most people are very sharing and giving. And the, um, the other cool thing is that there are more opportunities for me to get involved with the community going forward. You got to realize it's been three months, right? Since I've been MVP. So <laughs> um, I haven't got as involved as I want to. Um, and, and I will keep getting involved. It's just the stupid job gets in the way. <laughs> gotta pay the <laughs> how, do you, how do you make sure you take downtime though, right? There's a risk that you, you could, you know, getting into the program, you can get to the cycle of, creating content and uh, making, you know, sure you've met your contributions. How do you make sure you balance, you know, work and life? That is a very good question. That is very hard for me. Um, I just actually went through that is it was easy before I became an MVP because I have a son who I would go to his football games and, you know, you forget to get up and breathe, uh, as you know, sometimes when you're at a computer. But now that he's a little older and want, does not want anything to do with mom, um, I have to remind myself, okay, I need to go out to dinner. I need to go out to lunch. Um, I'm, I'm going, taking a week off for Thanksgiving to visit my family. And honestly, I don't know that I'll bring my computer. I, I haven't just totally decided that, but I'm trying to, okay, I, let's be disconnected for a week. Awesome. 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 That is so cool. You've, um, well, we've already chewed through, uh, now, a lot of time, but, you know, I do love to end with um, some quick fire questions. So are you ready for them? I am. What are you most looking forward to in the next 10 years? Retirement. <laughs> if you could create one holiday, what would you create? I like, I like a Halloween type holiday where you don't have to give gifts. It's not expected to give gifts. And you just get together with family and friends and, and have fun. Um, just, you know, the gifts kind of added, added pressure. <laughs> at, at Thanksgiving, like, uh, I don't know this. Do you have to give gifts at Thanksgiving or is no, it No, no, but everybody does big, big meals. <clears throat> and there are some people who try to outdo other people. And then if you're married, you don't, do you go to your in-laws, you go to your parents. Yeah, people exactly. Big, you know. Exactly. What's the best compliment you've ever received? The best compliment I ever received was an, someone I worked with 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. He told me how I changed his life because I meant, I guess I helped, he was having some problems and I helped him out and he, in his mind, I saved his job and I saved, you know, put him on a, he's a programmer now that I put him on the path that he, that he's on now. That is so cool. Such a good, and like the fact that it stuck with you for so long, it's awesome. What was the last foreign country you visited? 
um, last foreign country, uh, Mexico on a cruise. Would you rather save money or save time? Mm, that's a hard one. Time. Mm-hmm. What was your first job? I worked at a bakery when I was 13. I, I, how, how old are kids allowed to start working in America? 16 usually, but there are some rules. Yeah, yeah. In the old days, it was kind of like as soon as you could work, you're working, right? But nowadays, there are rules right around it. Yeah. Well, and some people will pay you under the table. You know, they call it paying under yeah. the table. They'll give you cash. <clears throat> I don't care about the bakery. They're probably not in business anymore. But um, it's been a long time since I've been 13. But um, it was nice because I worked, you know, Saturday and Sundays. And it was busy and, you know, a little money in your pocket. Yeah. Beth, it's been great talking to you. Are you on social media or do you have a blog that people can go check out? Yes, I'm on uh, Twitter at at bcohen26. And um, my blog is bestb-d365.com. Hey, thanks everybody for listening. Another year has passed and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of our listeners and supporters. Because of you guys, I am driven and feel motivated to continually do what I'm doing. And of course, I'm always grateful to all the MVPs who have taken the time to come on the show and share their stories with us and serve as an inspiration to other Microsoft business application professionals out there to grow in their profession and contribute to the community. We've got lots planned for the show, so if you have thoughts, questions, or suggestions about the show, please feel free to drop a message in the comment section or send me a a private message on LinkedIn is often the best way to get hold of me. Full show notes for this episode can be found at nz365guide.com forward slash 161. See you next time.